We're playing it careful. Hades is pretty weak. We're gonna make a play for him. We dash in on him with our three. We use our ultimate. We're able to get the pick with our ultimate. We're chasing Hercules. This Hercules does have some good wiggles. We're able to get the pick with our one. Now we're sticking to the store. And we're able to get a triple kill. Fantastic way to clean up that team fight. What a do, skibbity boo. It's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a viewer request to play set as jungle. If you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right and what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If you are a returning viewer, I think a lot of Seth's magic comes from the slow on his one and his ability to really move around the map. So let's go ahead and review his abilities. Seth's one is skewer. This ability is a line attack that is going to slow enemies for three seconds. If one of Set's spawns is active on the map, then it's going to dash towards wherever Set determines. Enemies hit by the spawn dash are going to be damaged and slowed for 3 seconds. Any dash from the spawns after the first will deal 40% damage, and the slow is 25%. Set's 2. Set's going to conjure a spawn of himself that can attack nearby enemies. Set can have up to 2 charges of this ability. Set can also interact with the spawn with his other abilities, committing them to attack or teleporting to them. Set can only have 8 spawns at any given time. As you level up this ability, the duration or the length of time that these spawns exist is going to go up. And the attack range of these spawns are relatively short. You have to be like right on top of them for them to attack you. It only has an attack range of 12 feet. Sets 3 Sandstorm. Set's going to summon a Sandstorm around himself that's going to reduce physical damage by 15%. It's also going to cause him to be immune to slows, and it's going to deal damage every 0.4 seconds over 6 seconds, so a total of 15 times. If Set is targeting a spawn when this ability is cast, he's going to immediately teleport to the spawn. Otherwise, he can reactivate this ability to teleport, and Set can only teleport once per sandstorm. Set's ultimate, Kingslayer. Set is going to gain 25% increased movement speed. Each time Set's attack damages a god, they gain a mark of Set. At 4 marks, the target is going to erupt. Enemies take a burst of damage on each explosion while Set becomes empowered, restoring health and immediately gaining a charge of spawn of Set. Excess charges are immediately consumed, causing a spawn of Set to appear near Set. This ultimate is going to last for 12 seconds. And Set's passive. Each time Set damages an enemy, Set gains a stack of Relentless. If Horus is the enemy being damaged, Set gains 2 stacks. Each stack increases Set's attack speed. Relentless stacks to a maximum count of 10 for 6 seconds. While Kingslayer is active, Relentless has no maximum stack count, and you gain 2.5 attack speed per stack. So we are able to steal the enemy red buff, and we are also able to confirm our red buff. We're going to go ahead and rotate back to these harpies. And in terms of the build, we're going to be going with Jungler's Blessing. We're going to be going into the tier 1 of the Crusher, and then we're going to be going into attack speed boots. Our speed is going to be up in about 20 seconds. We're probably just going to hit this one camp and then back. We need about 80 gold to get our tier tier 2 version of boost. We're going to go ahead and put a little pressure onto this Hades. Using our 3 to kind of obscure his vision. We hit him with our 1. He's very weak. 1 basic and we're able to confirm it. We're going to peel out because we are very weak and Thor might be able to get a pick on us. So we're just going to pull back into jungle, our speed is up, and we're off to a great start. Go ahead and buy the tier 2 versions, we're going to pick up a health potion, and then we're going to head to speed buff. Looking at our team comp, we... <laughs> our team's kind of has a terrible team comp. We have a Loki support, and we have a Anubis carry. So in the late game, we are not going to have a hunter, which is really going to hurt us in my opinion. And then the Loki support, okay. whether you like it or not, it just does not have the same level of CC as many of the other guardians who would typically play support. So we might struggle in the late game. We're going to go ahead and hit these harpies. We did speed blue harpies. That is our starting rotation. We probably should have hit the jungle shrine right there to get a little bit of gold for the team. Hades is here. 
That's most of his abilities. I think he still has his dash. He does. It's alright, we're able to poke him out for the Scylla. Their red buff is up. We might be able to secure it. And it looks like the red buff just secured Thor for us. Maybe it was... Was Thor on our red buff? I'm not entirely sure. We're going to go ahead and drop this red buff. We are two for two on invades on the enemy red buff. The enemies in left lane are kind of near their tower. If we made the rotation, I don't think we'd be able to get a pick. So we're just going to make the safe play and go for the farm on our red buff. We drop that. We've got about 20 seconds to kill before we need to back for our speed buff. We're going to go ahead and hit this back harpy, making sure that we're always hitting camps. Hades is here. That's his dash. We can go on him. We're going to use our three. We're going to use our ultimate and just go straight for it. We get caught on minions, but still is able to clean it up with our ultimate. So we were able to set her up pretty well. Right now we have the health and mana, so we don't really need to back. But we're going to miss out on a power spike if we don't back. So we're going to go ahead back, pick up Ninja Tabai, pick up a health potion, and then start our next rotation. I think this was the second day after the patch notes when this was recorded, so a lot of people are still playing Loki, kind of in every role. I let Ardia know that we're going for her blue, and if she wants the XP, she should rotate over. Does not look like she's interested in the XP, so we're just going to drop the blue. Right there, what she would have needed to do is rotate to blue instead of rotating to the Totem of Kill. Since our support is now in mid, we're going to go for these mid harpies. We're not going to go to mid from our side, we're going to go to mid from their side. Loki is able to get the pick onto the Thor. The enemy red buff should be respawning pretty soon, we're going to go ahead and make a play for that. Hercules is here. I think we have better secure than Hercules, and we are able to secure it. Rama's pretty close to his tower, so I don't think there's a whole lot of point in trying to rotate. Our red buff is about to respawn, that is a Hades dash, we're going to jump in on him. We try to jump in on him, we kind of failed. Scylla is able to get the pick with her ultimate, so we're just going to fall back. If they want to chase Hercules, good for them. We're going to farm instead of chasing the Hercules, I don't think we're going to be able to get him. Even if we do, there's so much farm available on the map right now. Go ahead and drop this red buff, this is going to throw our timer off a little bit. We had the enemy red buff and then our red buff spawning right after that. Now there's going to be a like three to five second delay between the two. We're going to go ahead and back because we have 20 seconds left on our speed buff. So this game we are going the crusher, but I think any one of those options would have been good. The brawler's beat stick, Jotun's wrath, or the crusher. The crusher is going to give you the most damage of the three. Brawler's Beat Stick has the anti-heal, so that could be very important if you're going against a healer composition. They have a Hades and a Hercules, so it's not a direct healer comp, comp but we definitely sh probably should have picked up Brawler's Beat Stick here. But the Crusher is going to give us the most power, and the Crusher is going to provide us 30 power, 20% attack speed, and 15 penetration. It doesn't directly give us the most power, but it's passive, helps us heal the most damage of the three mazes. Red maces? You guys know what I'm talking about. The Crusher's passive, you're going to deal an additional 20 physical damage plus 15% of your power over 2 seconds. So whenever we damage an enemy with an ability, enemy we're going to be dealing right. bonus damage. That is a dash from Hades, we're able to poke him with our 1 and okay. our spawn. That was a lot of damage. Thor and Hercules kind of pop up out of nowhere. We're playing it careful. Hades is pretty weak. We're going to make a play for him. We dash in on him with our three. We use our ultimate. We're able to get the pick with our ultimate. We're chasing Hercules. This Hercules does have some good wiggles. We're able to get the pick with our one. Now we're sticking to the store. And we're able to get a triple kill. Fantastic way to clean up that team fight. We're going to go ahead and drop their red buff. Rama 
It's time we show up. He just uses his dash. Oh, and that's his ultimate. So we're just gonna hang out. Bye, Rama. Unfortunately, he was able to clean up Anubis. Our red buff is up. We're gonna rotate there. Now it's gonna have an even longer delay before it spawns after we secure the enemy red buff. I think we're three for three on enemy red buffs. We're gonna go ahead and back because our speed is about to respawn. After going into the Crusher, we're gonna be going into Hydra's Lament. Hydra's Lament is gonna provide us 40 power, 10% cooldown reduction, and 10 MP5. For eight seconds after an ability, our next basic attack will deal an additional 40% damage. And it also has another passive that we gain 2.5 MP5 per 10% of our mana missing. But we're really getting it for that bonus damage on our basic attack. Ardeo is getting pressured. We're going to kind of hang out, see if they commit. Does not look like they're going to commit too hard. Hercules is here. We're going to get a little bit of poke onto him. He pushes us back, but there's no follow-up from his solo laner. We get a little bit of poke. We're just going to secure the blue buff. Looks like Loki's rotating over. He did say his ultimate was ready, but we weren't really there to provide any help. We're going to go ahead and drop the Harpies, and then hopefully we hit the Jungle Shrine. Yep. So that's going to give everyone on our team a little bit of gold. Hercules is in mid. We're going to go ahead and secure these Harpies. Always farming with set. Make sure you're always farming, hitting camps. Tier 1 tower is down in mid. We use our 3 to teleport in. We're going to use our Sandstorm. His dash is down. We're missing a lot of autos. This Hercules is very wiggly. He's got grade A wiggle shoes on. We're going to go ahead and rotate to the enemy red buff. See if we can't secure this. And that is another red buff secure for us. Now we're going to go ahead and rotate back to mid. See if we can get some additional damage. We're able to get the pick onto the Hades. We get pushed back by Hercules. Hercules uses his ultimate. We use our second spawn and then teleport to it. We miss our one onto the Hercules. We do have our ultimate. It's activated. We just need one basic and we're able to secure the pick onto the Hercules. Thor's here. We're able to get a double. Clean that up. Kind of a soft triple because we also got the Hades. We're going to go ahead and secure our red buff. And we're going to back so we can pick up speed. We get the tier 3 version or Hydra's Lament. After going into Hydra's Lament, we are going to be going into Arendite. I'll go over Arendite's stats whenever we actually get a piece of it. So we're going to be rotating to our red buff. Go ahead and throw a spawn over the wall. Use our 3 to teleport to it. Trying to let Ardeo know it's time to be on your blue. She's not that interested, so we're going to go ahead and hit the Harpy. Give her a little bit more time to get here if she wants to. Does not look like she... Oh, she actually might make it here. Unfortunately, we didn't see that she was trying to make it here, and we just secured it. I don't think she got any of the XP for that. We could have waited a second or two to let her get some XP. Enemy missing. Right now, we are just farming mid. Having a grand old time. Hercules is a little troublesome. The fact that he is wiggling around so much makes me think that he's a pretty good player. He's got some dukes. We're just going to set up a ward. We're not really looking to fight right here. We do want to try to secure the enemy red buff if we can. I think we made it a goal to try to secure it as much as possible this game. Artie is getting ganked in right lane, which means that their jungler is not going to be in this team fight over in left. Right now our team's fighting in between the tier 1 and tier 2 tower, not the best fight. We're going to throw our spawn, teleport in. We miss our line attack, we're getting greedy, time to run away. If we did not miss our line attack, I'm pretty sure we would have gotten the pick onto Rama right there. Hades is here, going to back up, not our fight. And Scylla goes down, not much we could do right there. The Loki and solo lane is proxying wave between the tier 2 and tier 1 tower. We go ahead and drop our red buff. We're going to rotate back to these harpies. Oh no, we're just going to back. 
which is fine. We could have rotated to the Harpies. We would have been a few seconds late to our speed. But we're farming so well, I don't think it would have mattered too much this game. So if we take a look at Set's passive, his little passive icon, the two red slash orange swords, those are his set spawn abilities. So he has two right now. And then the 10 little diamonds. We're gonna go ahead and get a little bit of pressure onto this Loki. He uses his ultimate. I think we used our, we're gonna blink in. We're gonna use our ultimate. Good pull by the Hercules. We're able to get the pick onto the Loki. But the 10 little diamonds, that is his marks of set. No, what's it called? Anyway, it's his stacks. So each one of those is gonna provide him 2.5% attack speed. Bit of a team fight going on in mid. We're not going to rotate to the blue. We're going to try to help out in this team fight. We do not have our ultimate. There's four people here. We're going to rotate in. See if we can't get a pick onto this Hades. We get the Hades. We're not necessarily trying to fight this. Rama would be our next ideal target. Artie is able to get the pick onto Hercules. We're thinking about making a play. Nah. We're just going to invade the enemy red buff again. Since we just cleaned up in mid, they don't have a tier 1 tower in left or mid. I'm pretty sure that we're going to be able to secure the gold fury right here. So I make the call for Anubis and myself to rotate. Anubis has mad lifesteal, so we're going to let him tank this. Our red buff is not up quite yet, so we're going to rotate to the purple buff. Anubis does not need help, but we are going to get some additional gold and XP for helping him clear it. We're going to go ahead and secure our red buff. Our speed is not going to be up for another 45 seconds, so we need to back in about 25 seconds. Since we didn't hit blue, our rotation was a little bit off. That's where all that extra time came from. Two people on right, we're gonna rotate over, see if we can help out at all. Two people, Loki's invisibility's down. We're gonna use our line attack, we get a little bit of poke. We try to teleport, we missed it a little bit. We're gonna teleport in, RDO is going to tank for us, and then we're gonna try to get the kill onto this Loki. We're able to get the pick. RDO is still plenty healthy. We're gonna go ahead and clear those minions. We're not going to hang out to get tower pokes. We're just going to let the minions do that. We're going to secure the enemy blue buff. That should put Loki behind a little bit. I think Loki does require a decent amount of mana for a solo lane. Our speed is up, so we're going to go ahead and back so we can start a normal rotation. We're able to pick up Arendite, and then we're going to be going into Heartseeker. Arendite is going to provide us 75 power and 10% cooldown. Whenever we ult, we're going to reveal all enemy gods within 120 units for 8 seconds. So if Loki's invisible, we'll be able to see him. While moving towards the enemies that are revealed, gain 30% movement speed. And your basic attack damage, or your next basic attack after ulting, is going to be 40 extra damage plus 30% of your power. This effect can only happen once every 45 seconds. So we're going to go in, we're going to ult, we're going to gain some additional movement speed on top of the movement speed that we're gaining from Seth's ult. And then our next basic attack is going to chunk. It's going to have the Arendite proc and also the Hydra's proc. So the Hydra's was 40% damage on your basic. And then this is adding 40 damage to that and 30% of your power. So your next attack after your ult is going to be very, very heavy. The enemy red buff is here. Or is up, I should say. We're going to go ahead and blink over the wall, try to secure it, and they were able to secure their first red buff right there. Very disappointed in myself. Loki's pushing right pretty hard. Ardia is going to have to rotate back to clean that up. We're going to secure our red buff real quick. We bought two wards, we need to set up our wards. That is definitely one thing that we can improve on, is setting up the wards that we actually buy. That is a Hades dash, I mean a Hercules dash. We're going to apply a little bit of pressure to this Hades. That is his dash, we're going to use our spawn and our ult, and our three. We're going to use our ultimate and we should be able to secure the pick right here. We're able to get the Hades. Next target is this Thor. 
He uses his dash so he's able to get out. We're going to check the enemy speed buff. It's not there. We're going to check the enemy jungle to see if we can't secure anything. By securing that harpy, hopefully we're taking a little bit of farm away from the enemy Thor. We hit level 20 at 18 minutes, so we were just farm central this game. I think this is probably the fastest I've ever hit level 20 in a game. We're going to go ahead and drop our speed buff. Right lane needs a little bit of help. Loki really hasn't left his lane. And Ardia has been rotating out, so Loki's just been getting good lane pressure. We're going to use our three so we can get some numbers and kind of figure out where Loki went. We're going to use our spawn, teleport on top of it. He uses his ultimate. We don't have our blink and we don't have our three. So chances are by the time we catch up to this Loki, he's going to be able to use another ability. Right as I say that, he goes invisible and disappears. Bit of a team fight in mid. We're going to see if there's anything we can do to help. It's just the RDO. RDO is able to get the pick onto the Hades. Thor is here. We miss our line attack. We're going to fall back a little bit. Enemy red buff is up. And we're going to start our next red buff secure streak. Shut down. Anubis is able to get the tier 2 tower. That's going to provide a little bit of gold for everyone on our team. We're going to go ahead and secure our red buff. Our jungle chalice is full, so we definitely need to hit that on our next rotation. I don't think I hit it on this previous rotation, so that's a little bit of a misplay. That's just some free gold that we're missing out. And that's gold that goes to everyone on our team, so we definitely want to try to hit it when we can. Anubis is working on the Oni Fury. We're going to go ahead and secure this. Hades, not Hades, Hercules uses his ultimate. Keep getting Hades and Hercules messed up this morning. So Anubis is going to call me out on it, and he's absolutely right. I could have stepped out right there, so the Gold Fury would have been immune to damage. But instead, I stayed in there, and then Hercules was able to secure it with his ultimate. You could have dropped it. You were on tether line. Yeah. So, that was my bad. That is something I could have done to help us secure that. Small L, because Anubis did use his ultimate right there. So we are going to pick up Heartseeker as our next item. Heartseeker is going to provide us 65 power. It's going to provide us 200 mana and 20 MP5, along with 10% penetration. Our abilities are going to deal 3% of the target's maximum health. If we have over 200 power, this is going to scale up, capping out at 6% of the enemy's maximum health at 400 power. Subsequent hits on the same target are going to deal 75% of the bonus damage for the next 3 seconds. So now we're all all of our abilities are going to chunk essentially. Set does have 3 damaging abilities. The 2 on its own whenever it attacks somebody doesn't really do a whole lot of damage, but whenever you use your 1 it's going to get a heart seeker proc on both the one and the dashing set spawn. Not our team fight in mid. We're going to go ahead and secure this red buff. Rama's here. We're going to see if we can get a little bit of pressure. That applies a slow. That's a beads and agus from him. We're going to teleport in. We're able to clean him up with the damage from our three. Ardeo is still getting pressured in mid, so we're going to rotate back. The enemy speed camp spawns right as we're here, so we're going to go ahead and secure this. Ardeo's getting... Ardeo's just tussling. We're going to stick to this Hades if we can. Dash it in on him. We're able to clean up the Hades. Hercules is the next target. Loki should be the next target. We're 14 and 5 so we did get our godlike this game. Loki uses his ultimate. We're going to teleport out of there real quick. Try to avoid a lot of that damage. So that was a scary amount of damage. If Loki gets a little bit stronger, he's probably going to piece us up with his ultimate. We want to make sure we don't die to the red buff, so we're just going to back. We probably could have gotten it there, but we were just playing it super safe. So here is where I think I miss by in this build. 
we go with Soul Eater. And Soul Eater is going to provide us... Whenever it's evolved, it's going to provide us 35 power, 15% lifesteal, 10% penetration, and 10% cooldown reduction. Our ability damage is going to heal us for 20% of the damage. I don't think this was the buy. I think what we should have gone instead was Brawler's Beat Stick. We need anti-heal, and we probably needed anti-heal from the beginning of the game. Crusher is a great starter, or starting item. It's really effective early on in the game, but in the late game, it does fall off a little bit. Brawler's Beat Stick does not fall off. It is super helpful. But since we went with the Crusher and got that extra damage early on, I think we should have sold our Assassin's Blessing and gone for Brawler's Beat Stick to get our anti-heal online. Crawler's Beat Stick is going to provide 40 physical power, 15 penetration. Enemies hit by your abilities are going to have 40% reduced healing and regeneration for 8 seconds. Right there, I got ulted by Loki. I don't think there was too much I could have done to avoid that. I did have my beads. That might have been my only option to get out of there. Rama's pressuring our tier 2 tower. He's able to secure it. So we bought a movement speed potion. We're not going to sell our boots quite yet, but we are going to go ahead and pop our movement speed potion. So that way, whenever we back the next time, we could probably sell our boots and pick up a item. So we are stacking the soul eater. It's It doesn't provide us enough power. Regeneration at this point in the game is not that helpful, just because we're getting, it, we're getting in there. We're burning people down. I think a Blood Forge might have been more helpful than Soul Eater. Blood Forge would have given us 75 power, a little bit of lifesteal, and whenever we kill somebody, we get a shield and some additional movement speed. Now that I'm reading the stats, I think, yeah, Blood Forge definitely would have been the pick. Not reading the stats, but saying the stats. We miss our one. Oh, this was before the patch. Because that's Loki's old decoy. We're going to go ahead and turn on him. We melt him. We did a lot of damage right there. Right here, we're going to try to blink through. But instead, <laughs> we just died to the decoy. <laughs> Thought process was, oh no, Loki ulted us. Quick turn on him. We kit dump on him. We get him one shot. And then we're like, all right, we have a blink. He does not. He starts running away. We couldn't blink right away, so we start getting close to him. And then right as we're about to blink, we step into his decoy, and his decoy goes off. Unfortunate. I think that's the last time I will ever die to a Loki decoy. Because he did get changed. I think this might have been the day before the patch, and that's why everyone was playing Loki. So, now we are in the team fighting stage of this game, and this is where things are going to be a little worrisome. We don't have a hunter, so how are we going to deal with this Hercules? Hunters are great at shredding Hercules. He usually has a decent amount of protections. Mages can do it, but it usually requires a lot more CC to get Hercules as a mage than it does as a hunter. Enemy team is able to secure the fire giant. Looks like Scylla's about to go down. We tickle this Hades. We do not do decent damage to him. All we can kind of do is poke him from a distance. We're about half, half health, so we got to be very careful on how we engage right here. Rama chunks us. I did not expect for three shots to kill me like that. So now, instead of grouping up, our team's kind of running into fights one person at a time. We were poking that Hades, I think we were trying to disengage, and then Loki came in and used his ultimate. So since Loki burned his ultimate on the Hercules, we felt obligated to kind of commit to fight a little bit right there. Then Rama was able to rotate in and clean us up. So 
Let's take a look at the builds. Mainly Ramas. Ramas got Rage, these Shadow Seal Shuriken, and Wind Demon. He's also got Quinsai. Makes sense that he's able to burn me down in three hits. Even as your allies fail you, seek opportunities to turn. So we sell our boots and we get the tier two version of Brawler's Beat Stick. Can anything treat you? Waiting for people to kind of overcommit right here. Loki's the only. We can't kill this Hercules. We need help from our team to be able to get him. He's just very tanky, very elusive. We're gonna try to make a play for the Loki. We get a little bit of poke onto this Hercules. All of our poke right here is safe until we dash in right there. We're able to get the pick onto the Loki. We're gonna get a slow onto this Hercules. We're gonna use our ultimate to try to burn him down. Beautiful ult by that Hercules. We miss our one. Looks like I pulled too much. We're gonna fall back because we heard Rama. Rama's gonna melt us. And if Hercules got any kind of CC on us, that Rama would have gotten the kill on us, no problem. I think Ardio's saying good game because I did not get the kill onto the Hercules. Look at that damage from that Hercules. That is a lot. And that's what we got to avoid. We heard him blink, so we're going to blink as well. Maybe that was my blink that I heard. But we're going to blink away. If we pick up Brawler's Beat Stick, I think we should have picked this up instead of Soul Eater. I think the ideal build path would have been Heart Seeker, Brawler's Beat Stick, Cell Boost for Blood Forge. Blood Forge or Titan's Bane. We're gonna go Titan's Bane, kinda to see if we can deal some more damage to this Hercules. Amazing. We're gonna try to stick to the squishies. We get hit by the Hercules. We're gonna have to run away immediately. We're less than half health. The fighting has turned into an all out Ardeo goes down. Loki is running into a 1v5. Now it is a 2v5 because Anubis is there. Oh look, more work for you to do. Loki goes down. Scylla goes down. Now it is just Anubis and myself left. Our team is just picking bad fights. I feel like we're trying to get poke from a distance, and then we see somebody go in, so then we kind of commit. Our target right here should be Rama. He's going to be a majority of the structure damage. Anubis has the right call. We dash in, but Anubis just pushed everybody out with his abilities. We're probably going to have to concede the middle phoenix right here. We might have been able to get a pick onto Hercules. Right here we're just going to camp, see if they really come in and commit to secure the titan. Looks like they're going to. Rama's the target. We use our ultimate onto this Rama. We get blown up and we're going to go down. Ardeo and Loki just respawned. They might be able to defend the Titan right here. Loki's able to get the pick onto Hades. Loki's able to get the pick on Hercules. Scylla gets the Thor and the Loki. So a successful defense right there. Now, we, what we do here is very impactful for the rest of the game. We need to push mid lane up a little bit. And we need to try to get something. They have four people down, just the Rama left. If we can get a Phoenix, we're going to bring this game about even again. However, if we do not get a Phoenix, they're going to have a pretty large advantage going into this next team fight. Because somebody's going to have to be cleaning up fire minions in the middle lane. We should be able to get this Phoenix right here. I have faith in your team. And rotate to our speed buff. Go ahead and drop this. The marks of the divine. Hit our jungle shrine. I'm trying to farm up. We did not get the Phoenix. Anubis is probably gonna be able to solo that 
Gold Fury, no problem. We're going to see if we can get Pyromancer. Scylla might be able to help us out. We do not have enough to get Fire Giant outright. So we're just going to get the Pyromancer, try to take the small victory. We're going to set up a ward. We can kind of fight the Hades, we're not too afraid of him. But we hear reinforcements coming, so we're going to start running away. We're going to dash away to avoid the Hades. Scylla goes down. She wasn't able to disengage quick enough. Amazing. Can't tell if I'm getting pinged or if that's Anubis getting pinged. She says awesome, I say okay, she says no, so I'm assuming it's the Anubis. Some unnecessary yes. harassment going on. Not necessary harassment, but just not being nice. Somebody's overextended right here. It is the Hercules, so he's probably actually not overextended because he's going to be able to walk out of almost anything. A hunter would have been so helpful for this Hercules. So. We sold our Crusher because the Crusher kind of falls off in the late game. Instead, we picked up Titan's Bane. Titan's Bane is going to give us 40 physical power and 20% physical penetration. Our first ability cast gains 20 additional physical penetration. This can only occur once every 10 seconds. So Heartseeker is providing us some penetration, 10%. I believe that is it. We got some flat pen from Brawlers. And now we're getting 20 from Titan's Bane and an additional 20 on its passive occasionally. So the cap is 40%, but I believe if you have a passive that deals with percentage penetration, it can go over that. So we're sitting at 30, but whenever we use this passive, it wants to take us to 50. Since it's in the passive, we can actually go to 50. Our team's trying to surrender. We say no. Unfortunately, we do not have the votes. Your is under I feel like we're going to have to back right here. They're pressuring our Titan. I feel like we popped off in the early game. We got a godlike. And then once the team fighting stage happened, we just kind of fell apart. We we're able to get the pick onto the Rama. Try to get some pressure onto this Hades. We would have gotten him, but his mantle of Discord proc saved his life. I don't think that fourth person is going to vote, so it's going like to time out and just be a 3-1 vote, and then we're going to surrender, which is super unfortunate. Not necessarily thinking that we could win this game. Our team fight was kind of atrocious, but it would have been nice to finish it out. Well, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. Thank you for stopping by. These stats will be posted in just a moment. Have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.